Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Over Easy. My name is Manny. In case you're new here or welcome back. As you can probably tell, this is a new setting that I've never done before and I'm honestly obsessed with it. This is quite a vibe and I really do enjoy it. So if you are listening to the audio, I will tell you about where I'm recording today. So I just kind of got tired of recording on my desk because I don't love that setup. I feel like the background's kind of boring and it's just not my favorite. The lighting's also not that good because I don't have a window in front of my desk. So I've been thinking about doing episodes on my bed because that's like where the lighting is best. Like all the windows come in and let the light in. It's also quite sunny today. So crazy how that happens because it was pouring rain this morning. And um, I'm laying on my bed, like literally just laying on my bed. I have a bunch of pillows, which will go over all of them because I feel like th that's just the vibe for today. I'm really just in like a chatty mood and I want to catch you guys up on everything. We are also going to do a few we're not really strangers questions today because I haven't done them in such a long time. I literally have not even touched the box in months. But that's kind of the vibe for today. I was really just into a very relaxed slumber party kind of episode for today. So that's literally what I'm going to do. It's also taking me back to my handheld mic era because I do have a little mic stand. But today I'm holding it since I can't, unless I stand it like on my tummy. I guess that might work, but the audio might be a little silly. So I'm holding the mic for today and that's kind of the vibe that we're going for. I actually am obsessed with this because like also my fairy lights are on so it's like kind of cute it's like slumber party era okay so let's go over all of my pillows. actually hold on let me think about this since we're just doing a catch-up episode let's do rosebud and thorn first and then we'll get into whatever I want to talk about today so rosebud and thorn oh does it look weird if I put my leg up a little bit I'll keep my legs down Hmm. Okay, my thorn for this week is definitely that my work week was just definitely super long and very tiring. Not even that much happened, but it just felt so long. Like literally on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I thought it was Friday already. So you can imagine my disappointment when I had to go through yet another work day because it wasn't Friday yet. By the end of Friday, I was so drained. I literally did nothing for the last hour because nothing was happening anyway. So yeah it was just a super long work week and things just happened that i wasn't quite happy with so it tampered my mood a little bit but thank goodness it's the weekend and we're here relaxing on a saturday my rose is a thank you so much for 100 subscribers on the podcast youtube channel that's literally blowing my mind crazy because also i was just like skimming through the analytics i don't really look at them because I don't really care about the analytics. I just do my podcast for funsies. But people actually listen and it's really wild. And I know I talk, like, I say this a lot, like every time we hit a milestone, but genuinely it does really blow my mind. And I've been getting nice comments and hearing from you guys. And it's just been so nice to know that my podcast has a little community of people that listen to it which is crazy because of course again as I've said a jillion times every time I talk about milestones I talk I, I started this podcast genuinely as a hobby and something that I always thought that I would enjoy never really with the intention of getting a ton of followers or stuff like that but the fact that people do enjoy it and resonate with what I say and all this it really does mean a lot it makes me feel a lot less alone and I know that you guys also feel less alone with what I go through so that is that okay I'm really enjoying this lying down setup it's just a little bit squishing my vocal cords so I don't know how I feel about that well we'll readjust and reassess for next week but this might honestly be the vibe forever let me know what you think because I feel like I love it I'm so comfortable and I'm like oh my god I also just kind of feel like I'm like in a therapist couch like this is what I imagine a therapist's couch would be like very comfortable my bud what am I looking forward to I'm really looking forward to the holiday season now that it's November and Halloween's over it basically means it's Christmas I am indeed the type of 
person that will start listening to Christmas music on November 1st. And I haven't done that yet this year, but I will soon for sure. And it really does make me happy because I also feel like everyone's getting ready for Christmas so early this year. I saw on my TikTok for you page that the Rockefeller tree is going to go up on November 11th. And I remember last year it didn't go up until when I was in New York and I was in New York at the end of November. I think it went up on the 30th last year. So it's crazy that it's going up so much earlier this year, but I'm happy that people want to celebrate and that people are happy about it. And I guess it is nice to have it up for longer because it is really beautiful. When I saw it last year, it's just so many lights and it's a huge tree. I really do want to go back to New York again, but maybe sometime in the spring or next year. Also, oh my gosh, Taylor Swift announced that she is having a few Vancouver stops on her Eras tour and I literally could cry just thinking about it. I want to get tickets so badly but obviously we know it's like a lottery system and just the wildest. I've never really participated in stuff like that because I don't really go to concerts but I know that it is like a war trying to get tickets and I am definitely gonna try. I signed up for a pre, what is it, verified fan or whatever. So we'll see if I get a code and then I'll pay that I can get tickets and go to our concert. If not, I may just buy a resale, but I know that those cost an arm and a leg. And um, yeah, but I am so excited. It's going on sale on Thursday and I really need to pre- myself because it's like gonna be when I'm at work and so I really hope it's not busy that day so I can buy my Taylor Swift tickets but I'm so excited if I even get like the chance I'll literally just stand outside for the concert like I'll be one of those people because I wasn't that big of a Taylor Swift fan until her Eras tour started and I saw clips of it and it literally looks life-changing I'm being a little bit dramatic of course but I am really wanting to go to the Eras tour really really badly Okay, so that's my rosebud and thorn for today. Now we're going to go over all of the pillows that I have on my bed because as you can tell, it's quite an extensive collection and I don't really know how I'm going to do this um, while I'm laying on them because I am laying on a few and it is really comfortable. Okay, let's start from left to right. My left, your right. First of all, at the front, this is Kaylee. She's a Squishmallow. She's the big, I think these are the... 12 inch no it's definitely more than 12 inches i don't really know how many inches but she is a little pink crab i got her at costco last year because when i started going to costco again last year it was life-changing to see how many squishmallows there were and she is just adorable although there is a little um because i used to when i lived alone and i took my pillows off my bed uh i would put them next to the heater and there is a part of her that is kind of cinched off by the heater oh yeah here it is she got kind of burned by the heater so like parts of her are a little bit cinched off but it's okay she survived but i do really like kaylee she's very squishy and comfortable to read on okay this white one back here you might think this white one has like no story because it's just a white but I actually bought this for my first year of university and it just gives me such nostalgic vibes because this has been with me since my first year. I literally bought this when I was moving into my dorm. I think she's from Target but I can't confirm and I don't remember for sure but I bought this before I went to move into my dorm for first year and I've had her ever since and she's just like a supportive long-term friend of mine that I really really appreciate. Also very comfortable to um lie down on while reading. I definitely when I read and my bed is made I lie down on this side because these are both so squishy and comfortable. Okay next. Next up is this Koya as you can tell. I'm not really much of a BTS fan. I like some of their like very basic songs but I got this because in grade 12 I went to New York with my friends Angela and Eric and when we were there I think it was in Times Square there was a huge like line store and 
we went in and I remember there's this picture of us sitting next to this giant bear the brown bear but I just thought this Koya was like the cutest character ever out of all of them I definitely think Koya is the cutest and I was obsessed with it so for my birthday that year after we came back from New York Angela bought me this little Koya stuffy and I've had it ever since so thank you very much Angela I very much appreciate it oh god I'm not putting them back in the right spots okay next two I'll introduce together these ones don't have as much of a story this one is another little squishmallow part of the valentine's day collection that i got last year this was just when i was super into buying squishmallows so i would buy one at every seasonal occasion because i just couldn't stop myself this little green little dragon and then this is the easter collection that i bought for my birthday last year as well i think last year for sure um this little rainbow koala that i think is so cute so these two i'm just gonna put them here i can't put them back okay next up this is gonna be a little bit embarrassing but i'm gonna be honest with you guys because this is my podcast and i am nothing but real this little reindeer my ex-boyfriend got me for christmas last year i believe and I know it's kind of weird because obviously I'm not in a relationship anymore, so it's kind of weird to still have it, but I more so think of Rolby, his name is Rolby, as my little traveler buddy now because when I went to Washington, D.C., when I went to Austin, when I went to New York last year, I brought Rolby with me. I literally stick him in my backpack and the TSA security guards must think I'm so weird, but now that he's come along with me for so many journeys, I just can't get rid of him he's more of like my travel buddy and when i go to colorado next winter or sorry this winter spoiler alert and maybe my future travels like going to new york again next year i'm gonna bring him because like he has been with me on all my journeys and i just i feel like he's such a traveler you know reindeers they um go all around the world on christmas eve so i feel like he's just meant to travel with me and he is my favorite travel buddy and i stick him in my backpack and i sleep with him because he does remind me of home when i'm away traveling in other people's beds other people's beds more like hotel beds you know airbnb beds that's what i mean and it gives me like a little sense of home so i don't get too homesick now part two of my embarrassing story is that this little seal i got my ex-boyfriend while we were dating and he gave it back to me after we broke up and i still have him because honestly because just the seal's so cute if you can see his eyes are a little bit half open so it looks like he's kind of sleepy and he's just like the perfect baseball size to squish and sleep with also when i go to bed i take off every single stuff he except for roll be in the little seal so don't think it's too crowded in here okay what's next Oh, this one. This little lamb I got from one of my dance friends literally probably when I was like 14 and I've had it ever since. And I just think it's so cute. It puffs up its chest. It's like, hee hee. So that is the story of the little lamb. Now we're getting into the pillows that I am sleeping on, which is not great. Oh, I forgot this one. This one is another Squishmallow. Back when I was obsessed with collecting Squishmallows, this is part of the Halloween collection from 2021, maybe. And it is just this little vampire dog. I think it is so cute. And I remember I would, I brought it to my dance class that I was teaching when I did a Halloween themed dance class and the kids were obsessed with it. So kudos to me for picking such a cute Squishmallow. It is very adorable. Next up, I have this little exclamation mark, and it is from, on the back it says, Freeing Canada Station. This is from my era of when I was obsessed with escape rooms with my friends. So it's literally from like 2015, I think, grade 10. And we, all my friends and I would do is go to escape rooms together and then get ramen after. That's literally all we would do on our hangouts. We hit every single escape center and played every single room almost we never won because we were not smart at the time but this was from one of the escape centers and it was called freeing canada as you can tell this one i remember there was like a huge ball pit at the end which was so much fun i have no idea if it's still open i would definitely want to go back if it is because recently i've been getting into escape rooms again with my friends i did two 
a few weeks ago the hardest level and then the second hardest level and we won both of them which is kudos to us because we are so smart now college educated if you know what I mean (laughs) okay let me see what I am lying on okay what I'm lying on is oh Milo an iconic squishmallow this one I also got the same time I got my vampire dog Milo's a little mummy and I'm obsessed with him he is so cute next up oh gosh I don't know how to do this because I'm gonna have to I'm gonna fix them all when I take my break after recording because I'm almost at the 20 minute mark and that's when I take my break hold on hold on let me let me adjust this I'll lie on Koya because I gotta lie on something okay this squirtle has a bit of an iconic story this squirtle oh now I remember okay so this was back from when I was in second year university and I was starting to no I met this guy at a club and because I was tipsy that night we kind of like held hands and did whatever and then we ended up going on a date after the club night because apparently he fell in love with me I guess I hope he never watches this podcast I will be so embarrassed but anyways um I can't really remember how it's related to this but one of my good friends at the time was kind of memeing and got me this squirtle for Christmas and what he did was he taped my date's face like he printed my date's face on a piece of paper and taped it to the front of squirtle's face and it was so embarrassing but very iconic memories so this is from again a very long time ago second year university but I've kept him he's very cute I don't know why he's like squished though it's kind of interesting but very sturdy not very squishy like very sturdy feeling and um he's like a little pillow pet okay I only have a couple more I'm trying to feel for which one I should go for next okay this hedgehog this hedgehog also has quite an iconic story i literally keep all these pillows from so many memories and years ago and now that i'm thinking about them again some of them the stories i don't know why i still keep these so this hedgehog is actually from my first boyfriend back in first year and (laughs) i remember at the time my boyfriend and i were or that boyfriend and I we were doing long distance because he was in university in Ontario and I was at UBC but it was Valentine's Day and we couldn't see each other because it wasn't reading break or anything like that so what he did was he knew this was when my hedgehog obsession started he knew I was obsessed with hedgehogs and so what he did was he asked my friend Rebecca to go to a store to buy a hedgehog stuffy for me and give it to me for valentine's day so he didn't buy it but he got one of my friends to go out of her way to buy it and it's so funny thinking about it now but it was so sweet at the time i was like oh my god that's so cute and rebecca was like i'm not only single but i'm buying the couple's valentine's day gifts for them that i thought was so funny So, this is from first year of Valentine's Day, and it is still really cute. I love hedgehogs, of course. Okay, only a couple more. I should have one more, but I can't find it. Okay, anyways. This is another Squishmallow. It's like the mini ones. This is a zebra. I think I just got it when I was collecting Squishmallows. Like, I love opening the mystery kits because the mystery just thrills me. So, this is one that I got. I think this heart is also from the first year Valentine's when my boyfriend at the time got me this hedgehog. I think. Otherwise, I can't remember when this is from. And last but not least, but I can't find it. It's not here. Oh, there it is. I was squishing it. This is most recently. I got this Squishmallow this year, and it is another Halloween one. And she's a little bat, and she's so cute. So those are all of the stuffies on my bed they all are iconic and mean something so important to me as you can tell and um i just wanted to share that because we changed the setting of this podcast and i felt like it was only proper that i introduced you to all of the members of the crew 
and um, now I'm going to take my little break and reset my setting so that I can lie comfortably on this on the stuffies again so I'll be right back okay we are going to do a couple we're not really strangers questions because I have not done them in such a long time and I just love reflecting and chatting about them so let's do it ready first one we're also only doing level three by the way because obviously those are the juiciest ones level three when was the last time you had a big win and how can we celebrate wow interesting i'm gonna be honest and say that recently i feel like my life has been it feels like i've been quite stagnant in that it's been very stable and i feel like i'm finally in the flow of like working nine to five and having a very stable daily routine so because of that it feels like i haven't really progressed much it feels like i've been very stagnant but i recently had a counseling session and i know that that is not the case i'm always learning and growing but let me think about my big win oh actually you know what i can say this past week i went to my regular workout class i do this workout class where it's uh, half treadmill and half strength work so half the time you're on the treadmill doing running intervals and the other half the time you're on the floor doing strength exercises and this Monday I was usually like everyone who goes to class is super regular and we all have our favorite spots that we like to go to but this past week I was put into a different spot because just like someone who usually goes wasn't there so I took their spot and I was basically just like paired up next to people that I don't usually work with and it was really fun because the person that I was next to kept challenging me to run faster and faster and faster and typically I don't like running that much like it's not my favorite part of the class so I won't push myself as hard as I know I can go because honestly who wants to push themselves to run faster like I don't want to do that so anyways but because I was next to this new person that I usually am not next to they kept pushing me faster and faster and faster and I ran at a speed of 10 on the treadmill and it was so fast for me but I could do it and it felt like such a big win because I was like damn I'm so proud of myself and like I wasn't completely winded after which I was also really happy about like I could I was breathing heavy but I could still survive and do the rest of the workout after so I honestly think that would be my biggest win recently it was a good feeling and it also shows that like I have been kind of holding myself back and I could be pushing myself harder but I just haven't recently how can we celebrate? Um, I mean, honestly, any type of celebration is down for me. Let's go eat food. Let's go shopping. We'll do anything. That was a, yeah, that's why I love thinking about that because I wouldn't have thought that as a big win, but now that I reflect on it, I'm like, yeah, actually it is kind of a big deal. All right. Next question. Oh, this is a wild card. Let's not do that. I want a question. What limiting belief do you think is holding me back the most? Damn, that's deep. What limiting belief do I think is holding myself back the most? Um, I think one thing that is holding me back is that I guess I kind of believe that I am not capable of my truest potential not I guess I could say like I am not extraordinary I guess is what I could say that's kind of something I've thought about myself and I want to stop saying that and believing that because I know that it's like holding me back but I used to always say that I'm like you know just average at everything not spectacular at anything and I realized like no like I am really extraordinary at a lot of things but I just need to believe that in myself for example that that one I just said about me running super fast on the treadmill like that is extraordinary and I I think um for so long I was just believing that I was like oh I'm not like super athletic like there was a former Olympian in our class that does the class quite often I'm like I could never be like her but I could be. I just have to stop holding myself back and believing that I can't. I think that's just what I need. And I think career-wise and like personally, I should also stop believing that. Like just not to settle, I think. It's just to keep growing and striving for more because we are all capable of it. But I think what's holding me back is myself, my own beliefs that I am not capable. So 
yeah. Anyways, next question. Hmm. How have I helped you without realizing? So obviously you're supposed to play this game with a friend, but I'm going to answer this as, how has the podcast helped me without realizing? I think the podcast has really helped me because... <sighs> a few reasons. I'm kind of going to brain dump right now. One thing is that it makes my thoughts feel very valid because... I honestly have like a running inner monologue in my head 24 hours a day. I know there's that thing where it's like some people don't have an inner monologue, which I think is absolutely crazy because I feel like mine is running at high speed all the time. And honestly, my podcast is just me running my inner monologue out loud. And it's really nice that people can connect and resonate with it because it makes me feel very valid in that my thoughts my thoughts relate to other people and people relate to my experiences and my thoughts and I really really like that so that has really helped me because I don't know why but I have a really big problem with like not thinking my thoughts or emotions are valid or my big thing was when I got upset or when I get upset I don't feel like my emotions are valid and I don't voice that I'm upset because I'm like, oh, I'm just making this too much of a big deal, which is not good. But I like the podcast. I love the podcast because obviously it helps me voice what I'm thinking and tell myself that, oh, it's okay to feel this way or think this way. Like whatever you think and feel is valid because they are your emotions. So I really do appreciate the podcast for that because I have had a very hard time doing, struggling with that my whole life. So I really appreciate that. Another way the podcast has helped me is it allows me to subtly have conversations with friends that I would not regularly have in that I talk about things on the podcast that I don't really talk about in real life. And the fact that my friends or people that I know listen to the podcast and then bring up the topics later on, I'm like, oh, like we can talk about this. And I would have been too scared otherwise to bring this up with you, but now that we can bring it up because I subtly brought it up in my podcast, not even subtly, I bring it up in my podcast and now we can talk about it because you listen to it. And that makes me, it has allowed me to create more meaningful connections and just be able to talk about things that maybe I would have been scared to bring up or not regularly brought up in my regular life. So very happy with that. Also, it's just something that I like to spend my free time on. And recently this week, I've been thinking about like, you know what? I feel I, I truly genuinely feel that I could have any job as long as my side personality, not side personality, I mean my like free time and hobbies are things that I genuinely love and I'm passionate about. Like my job doesn't have to be something that I absolutely love and obsessed with, but as long as I have my spare time and I do things that I love in my spare time and create meaningful connections with other people, I think that's genuinely what I just need to have a happy life. All right, next one. Um, in which ways, okay, this is definitely meant to do with another person, so I'm not gonna read that question. Okay, next. Oops. What is something we used to take for granted? What is something we could be taking for granted now? Damn. That's a good one. What's something I take for granted? I definitely used to take for granted the time that I had with other people, mainly being my friends and my family. And I say that because with family, obviously, everyone's getting older every single year and through a lot of the health issues that my family and I have faced these last few years since COVID, it has really made me aware that, oh, you know what? Like time with people is not forever. And I know that when I was about to move out or like a few years before moving out, I definitely was like very pessimistic about the time that I spent with my family because I was very annoyed and upset all the time. But now that I'm a little bit older and wiser and I've also lived alone on on my own for a year. I realized like, oh, time together with family is actually so important and something that is very, very limited and not always available in life. So it's really important to take advantage of that and not take it for granted. And I definitely used to before. Same with my friends. I feel like this year, my friends and I have definitely started doing much more genuine and meaningful activities together and we've really like 
actually connected is that something weird to say but it has definitely reminded me that you know people are not always here in our lives forever whether it be they move away they start new jobs they do other things so it's really important to take advantage of the time that you do have together because it is not infinite it is a finite resource what's something i take for granted now um something i might take for granted now let me think Mm, I feel like I am sometimes taking for granted the fact that I am in my 20s and it kind of makes me feel like, oh, like I have forever until my 30s, like I don't need to figure it all out now. And I'm not saying that I need to figure it all out right this second and in my 20s, like I know that my 20s are a journey, but sometimes I'm like, I feel like I'm in the opposite of it. You know, I'm like, oh, like I'll just let the universe figure itself out. And while I do partly believe in that, I do feel like we should also be a little bit more proactive in our decisions and our life journey. And I feel like because right now I'm kind of taking for granted the fact that I'm 23, I'm young, I'm free, I'm kind of taking that for granted and just kind of chillaxing a little bit too much, I feel. So I do want to take a little bit more proactive steps about my future, I guess, you know, job wise, money wise, stuff like that. Okay, I'm learning that I don't love this position because it is indeed crushing my vocal cords and it's making it a little bit hard to talk. So I kind of have to talk like this, like staring up at the sky, but it's not really great for the camera. Okay, I can't take that question. I think we'll do two more. Make this episode a little bit short and sweet. Okay. What growth have I seen in myself recently that has been exciting to watch? Okay, I definitely will say one thing is I am so much more comfortable taking up space in a room and with other people, especially in a work setting. So before I was definitely super shy in terms of like work and stuff like that because I was young, I was new, and I didn't really know my footing in the supply chain world. But now that I've working, I've been working for over a year at this point, I definitely am much more comfortable because there are people that I've worked with for a long time and I also do have experience and expertise, which is kind of crazy to say because like I've only been working a year, but I do have experience. And it is nice because I I am confident. I can say that. I am confident in my work abilities and my work experience and that makes me really happy. And it's also because I've been like working the same position. I definitely would say if I change positions, I don't know if that confidence would come with me because obviously then I'd be in a whole new bar- ball game. But because I've been working the same position and I've been growing my skills and I've been working this for a while and I know the shortcuts and like the ins and the outs, I'm much more confident and I am very confident talking to people. Like I will assert what is right and what I need and it's great and that makes me really really happy because I've grown a lot and also it kind of just bleeds into your personal life you know when you're confident about one thing your confidence kind of shines wherever you go so I've been much more definitely in myself and like taking up space and I enjoy that and it's something that I'm really proud of myself for because there are times when I would slink in the corner of the room and not want to be seen and that's just kind of I don't think that's good all right last question of the day Ooh, mm, no i kind of answered a question similar to that and also it's a wild card okay last question actually i really like this how have i changed over time and what hasn't changed at all that's really cute i love that what has, how have I changed over time and what hasn't changed at all? Okay, well, going back from the last question, what has changed over time is definitely the authenticity that I feel and also the confidence that I feel being myself in any type of situation, whether that be work with friends, with new people, like I'm very confident in myself and I don't feel like I have to change myself to make people like me and I am so proud of myself for that because I feel like it makes me so much happier to be able to be genuinely authentic and be myself in any situation in my life. It's also just much less exhausting. Before, I feel like I would have to put on a mask around different friend groups and act certain ways in order to be liked by other people, but now I've come to a point in my life where I have a good circle of people around me that accept me for who I am and also I 
if you don't like me for who I am, that's okay. We're just maybe not meant to be. I think that's also the mindset I've taken with dating is like, if you don't like me, if we don't click, that's fine. Like there are other people for us out there and this just wasn't meant to be and that's that. It's okay. What hasn't changed at all? Um, hmm. What hasn't changed at all? I definitely would say my like chaotic energy, chaotic spastic energy. This is me in a nutshell is like chaotic spastic energy yet somewhat organized. Like I feel like that's like the best way to describe me and I feel like that's just how I've been my whole life. I love it. Like there are just some times when I'm just so chaotic and like last minute and it's for the vibes. It's not because I'm genuinely spastic and I don't plan things out, but sometimes I'm like, uh, this would be more fun if we kind of made it up on the spot, you know? We don't always have to plan everything out to the minute, but then other times I'm also like, this we need to plan out. I think it's just like a cost-benefit analysis of the energy that I want to spend, like, planning things out if that makes sense. Like, sometimes it's so fun to just be chaotic and just see where the times go and just take it as it is but other times it's important to also plan things out to the details and the minutes and I think that has stayed with me my entire life there are times when I am definitely chaos reincarnated but then there are also times where I'm like I need to plan this out by the minute and not forget any details at all so maybe something like that I guess anyways that's gonna be my episode for today i hope you like the change of scenery i might keep it i might change it i don't really know but it was fun to just switch things up because i feel like sometimes things can get a little stale being the same every week this is just part of my chaotic energy as i said so maybe we'll do the next podcast like outside in my backyard or something (laughs) that would be fun anyways that's gonna be it for this episode i hope you have an amazing week and i will talk to you soon bye this wave is kind of like Bye. <laughs> and I was like, yo. <laughs>